Ibn Jarir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu asked Muhammad sallam, Ya Rasulullah, what happens if I am walking and my gaze accidentally, look at this, accidentally, not deliberately, falls on a forbidden look? What did he say? Oh, it's not a problem, just relax. No. He said, turn your eyes away. It looks at a forbidden place or forbidden person, or book, or paper, or screen, or scene, or image, or whatever other but Lord, turn your face away. Do not continue looking. Do not continue looking. It is haram for you to continue once you know that it is haram to look at. Especially in this sizzling hot weather that we are currently experiencing. And one of the most grievous sins of summer is what? The sin of undressing. We all know that people in these days are prone to cut down on pieces of clothes they wear. Pieces. I'm not saying full garments. Pieces. In other words, they're hardly wearing anything. They might as well go back to their myth of Adam and Eve with the leaf. There's no difference today. And... Seducing people's eyes. But this is the most grievous sin. The sin of undressing in these hot summer days. It is hard, but not for a believer. And they claim by dressing like that, we are only seeking what? A cold breeze on a hot summer day. We can't dress with clothes that are going to make us hot, they say. We have to relax. We have to cool down, we want natural air conditioning. We want the breeze to hit us and cool us from the heat that we are in. But Allah Ta'ala says what? Informing us to inform these people. Saying that the hell fire, the fire of hell, is much fiercer in heat if they only understood. Another arrow of Satan is the ignorance of the consequences of the reckless look and how easily it can affect you and indulge you into zina and indulge you in the evil act of masturbation. And as we heard earlier on, the catastrophic consequences of zina itself, how it shatters and destroys home, destroys behavior and character, ethics and moral, spreads envy and jealousy, hatred and enmity among people, how it destroys the society as a whole, how it brings shame, embarrassment to the family and their relatives, and how it, how it spreads the worst of diseases. These are all catastrophic evil consequences but when a person is applying this evil he does not think of it does not think of it only when it is too late and when it is too late he says what have I done to myself if he's a believer but if he's not a believer he still doesn't care he can't wait for the second chance but if he's a believer he says astaghfirullah he knows what he done was wrong so think before you do it Arrow number four is feeling an elusive delight when stealing a glance of the forbidden. That is very evil. That you feel comfortable, satisfied when you see that which you shouldn't see. Like you're looking at the person and you're feeling comfortable. You're enjoying it. You're enjoying looking at nudity, nakedness. That is evil. And wallahi, this is no other than the effect of heedlessness and the lack of reverence to Allah Ta'ala in a person's heart. For indeed, if this person had real glorification, real love for Allah Ta'ala, he would never ever feel in this way. Instead, a person, if he commits haram, like the forbidden gaze, he will feel bad. He will feel resentful, remorse. He will be disappointed. He will be angry. He will do anything immediately to rectify that problem 
That sin by committing a good deed so we can erase the evil deed. This is a believer. This is a believer. Arrow number five. Turning away from marriage for both men and women for so many diverse, trivial, futile reasons. And what happens after that? What happens after that? If you're able to get married, physically and financially, and you've got that interest, but you turn away, what happens? That explodes indefinitely the fire of desire and instinct. As soon as you look at that forbidden gaze, you are going to be affected. Because you want that forbidden gaze, and you want more than that forbidden gaze, but you do not want to get married. Why? I haven't finished my university. 